Hey guys, um, so I thought Foo Camp, my first Ignite, this would be a great time to say to absolutely everyone that I'm sorry. Um, I guarantee I've aggravated pretty much everyone in this room and your family and your family's family because I have worked in conversational technology, speech recognition in particular, for over 15 years, which means if you've heard, I'm sorry, I didn't understand, there's like a reasonable chance that I had something to do with that, which is... <laughs> Not awesome, but I've been trying for the last 15 years to like improve stuff, NLU, dialogue systems, all this stuff leading up to modern day voice assistants. So I worked on a bunch of enterprise ones. You guys know, of course, Siri, Cortana, Google Now, all this stuff. But this crazy thing happened. I've been working on this stuff for 15 years, and I thought mobile was going to fix it. It was going to be awesome, not like this. And then this thing happened, which is we discovered nobody wants to talk to this stuff. Like, sure, you're all doing Siri, set your alarm, and you might talk to Alexa or in your car but you're not talking to your smartphone, the dominant sort of compute platform in the world right now. And so it started to really bug me, right, 15 years. So I went and reread Marshall McLuhan because he foretold the future. And he said, you know, the telephone, which I think is a proxy for sort of just synchronous voice communication, requires complete participation, which is obvious. But then he goes on to say that we totally resent this because, um, you know, we're sort of beings of fragmentary attention. And having this sort of complete participation and back and forth we sort of don't like it. And you think over 50 years ago he said this, but now think about how much more fragmented our attention is and sort of uh, where we're at today. But the thing Marshall McLuhan also talks about is how technology sort of extends humankind's capability. So he talked about the phone being an extension of our ears and vocal cords, but I think he talked about the mobile smartphone as extending sort of our eyesight and tactile capability, which goes a long way towards starting to explain why messaging, why this, this sort of tactile visual thing. It's not just text, it's emoji, it's animated GIF, it's sharing you know, images and video is the dominant sort of platform. So messaging is starting to eat mobile, people are starting to say. So I decided to just chuck the whole voice thing and start this company, Automat, to just explore it because I felt like something was happening. But the really cool thing is, especially at Foo Camp right now, these are all the companies and people that I could find that uh, are here right now that are involved in AI and a lot of them messaging and a lot of them bots. So, that's really cool, but I've mentioned bots and people have mentioned bots, like how do I define it? And one thing we learned here you know, in the last couple of days is there isn't a definition, but I define it as being integral with messaging and some level of AI, right? So I'm in a messaging client, I've got some level, maybe a lot, maybe a little of AI, and that equals a bot. Um, I think there's two things we're gonna see, short and long term. In the short term, bots are gonna displace, not replace, but displace certain types of applications. And in the long term, messaging is gonna be this sort of fertile ground where bots can start to learn from people. And that's a big idea in AI. In the short term, we all know this is the problem. We're trying to reach people in app stores. It just turns out that 65% of people download zero applications in a given month. So how are you gonna reach people? Um, you go, well, what about this other 35%? Well, this stat just came out from Mary Meeker. It turns out that other 62% of that other 35% is all Facebook. WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook, Instagram. So you're going, Okay, well, what do I do? Well, maybe I can use the web or the mobile web. We can still use that, right? Well, and this isn't a great data point, but I think it's kind of funny. I talked to this 21-year-old recently. We went through all the phones, apps on her phone. She had 10, and I said, oh, you only have 10 apps. You must use the web a lot. She goes, oh, uh, you mean that thing that when I click on it, it opens? Yeah, I hate that thing. So the, <laughs> the last 20 years, right, she hates it. So how do you reach her? Well, messaging apps, which are bots, don't require download. Um, they're viral and they're inherently communal. They're shared experiences. They work across mobile and desktop with no extra engineering. And then getting into this longer term thing, there's this seamless interplay between humans and AI, which is uh, where we can do some really interesting things. So obligatory Star Wars slide, we're like batting half, I think. Um, and the point I'm trying to make here is that it's not necessarily a bad thing to have a human controlling a bot. Um, sometimes, you know, it's not just always about technology not working. There can be a real sort of symbiosis there. So if, just really simple kind of retail example. If uh, I get a product recommendation, am I getting that from a person or am I getting that from a recommendation engine? If I type something, am I actually getting a human response or am I getting an AI bot behind the scenes? And uh, I posit that if it works well, you don't really care. And what gets really cool is if you start to think about all of this as just expertise of any kind, and you start to actually build in a machine learning pipeline, collect what this person does, and actually have the bot learn from that, you can learn really human behaviors. And I mean that in a good way, not just automating things, but creating great experiences. You chat with your friend, entertainment chatbots come out of it. You chat with a salesperson, a sales bot comes out of it. You chat with a banker, a banking bot comes out of it. You chat with an HR person, you can do things inside the enterprise. Um, I didn't know what this slide was, I just thought it was good. I thought I might dance off if I totally screwed up. But one thing I will say is this has been an awesome experience because there's great use cases coming out to help us that are actually meaningful. So this has been awesome, thanks. <laughs>